This is the second part in the lecture on exponential functions. In this lecture, we're going to talk about creating exponential functions from application problems or word problems. Really, the only prerequisite you need for this, and the most major prerequisite you'll need, is to watch the concepts video that's supposed to be watched prior to this. I talk about what an exponential function is, I talk about the parts of an exponential function, all that stuff. And I'm only going to briefly review them in this video. I'm not going to introduce them, I'm just going to say remember this and that's it. So let's go ahead and define it again. Exponential functions are just functions of the form p of t is equal to p naught b to the t where b is called the base. p naught is called the initial population b is the base of the exponential function, but b is also called the growth or decay factor. Let me go ahead and highlight that because I didn't last time that I, in the last video, so I'll go ahead and highlight that here. And altogether that is known as an exponential function. So we have all the parts and pieces that we can talk about, p naught being initial and b being the growth or decay factor. So let's take an example here. Suppose that a population of 57 bacteria triples in size every five months. This is indicative of exponential behavior because you are multiplying the population by some number every chunk of time. In this case, it's multiplying by three every five months. When you see that multiplying by a number every so often, it means that you have an exponential growth going on, or possibly an ex exponential decay. The fact is, the word triple tells us it's going to be growing. Okay, so we're tripling every month, it means, you know, or every five months, means five months from now will be three times that size. So what is the initial population? I'm taking this in little bits. The initial population, which in our formula, and maybe I should write the formula for exponential function first. Maybe I'll write that down below on the right hand side. Our formula for an exponential function is p of t is equal to p naught b to the t. Again, where p naught is our initial value, our initial population. Well, the initial population for this problem is 57. So p naught here is equal to 57. I'm already finding out these unknowns in this problem. Now part B is a little more challenging. What is the monthly, and this is the key word in this problem, you should always pay attention to the wording of the problem, what is the monthly growth factor? We know that the growth factor is 3 for every 5 months, but the monthly growth factor is a little bit different. A great way to kind of approach this problem to really see what what we're going to have to have there is to write out a table of values just to kind of show you the pattern. So I'm going to say time zero, in other words, the initial time, our population of bacteria, well, we said it is 57. And I'm going to leave some spaces in here, not very many, uh, maybe just a few, like a couple steps or something like that. and down below I'll say five months later, so five months have passed, we know that this population triples every five months, so it's going to be like that original population, but three times its size. Another way to write this, by the way, is three to the first power, but uh, more about that later. And then as time ticks on, ten months down the road, well, the population will be based on the 57 times three, because that's what it was five months prior the five month mark but now five months after that five month mark we're at 10 months we should be multiplying by another three or in other words 57 times three squared the question is what about month one two three and four I mean wh what's happening in those months does it just magically do we stay at 57 all through those months and then all of a sudden in month five we triple immediately right then the answer is no. Every single month the population is growing, it's just not tripling. It just becomes triple the size at month five, but it's it takes that long to triple. So let's do a little experiment here. Let's suppose that in month one the population, well, it's 
from it's based on the 57 but we're going to multiply this by 3 raised to the 1 -fifth power and the reason why I chose 1 -fifth is because I'm 1 -fifth of the way to a full uh, I guess a full cycle a full tripling because remember a full tripling occurs every five months so one month in I'm only one fifth of the way in now if I think of every month as being one fifth of the way to a five month mark well then the next step would be 57 times 3 to the 1 fifth we're going to it's basically the next step the second month is going to be the same as the first month but again times 3 to the 1 fifth power in other words I just multiply that last value by 3 to the 1 fifth and if you do the math there that's 57 times 3 to the 2 fifths and now you could probably guess the next one will be 57 times 3 to the 3 fifths and so on and so forth it turns out that in general if you have a population that doubles triples quadruples or whatever every n number of months then you have let's say I'll just put n here let's say n months later the population is going to be 57 times 3 to the well n over 5 and I'm sorry I said and um, that it's tripling every n months I should should have said let the number of months that pass be n and in this scenario at that time the population will be 57 times 3 raised to the n over 5 power just based on this on this pattern we're developing but this is asking what the monthly growth factor is so let's let's write the function really quickly I'll go ahead and write it right here the function now I know is gonna be P of T is equal to 57 times 3 to the T over 5 power because every five months it triples but my question is that is the growth factor 3 remember in this equation down here B is considered to be the growth factor but B has to be raised just to the T not to the T over 5 but just to the T power so I have to manipulate our exponential function to determine what the growth factor is so the answer here is no we're gonna manipulate this this can be manipulated to be P of T is equal to 57 times the quantity something raised to the t power and that something is 3 to the 1 fifth powers to powers multiply so that's still t over 5 the power is still t over 5 I've just brought the 1 fifth power on the inside of the parentheses so the growth factor the monthly growth factor is 3 to the 1 fifth that tells me by what amount I'm multiplying the population by each month and you could also do this for a daily growth factor if you want to it just won't be 3 to the 1 fifth it'll be 3 to the 1 over how many ever days there are in five months so 150 let's just say so let's ask a, a, a useful question what's the bacteria the population of the bacteria in 37 months now remember our exponential function it actually can you can either use this first one or the second one it doesn't really matter the second one I just used to answer this question what's the monthly growth factor but in reality I tend to use the first one uh, more often than I use the second one for calculations so what's the population in 37 months that means let t equal 37 because our time is based on months here so let t equal 37 it's really asking what p of 37 is and again you see the usefulness of the function notation here because it allows me to see what I'm plugging in and at the same time when I get an answer it'll, I'll I can see my output as well so I'll see the input and its corresponding output it's a very nice approach to function note or the very nice reason the function notation exists now I'll tell you right now this is going to involve a little bit of calculator usage so let's go ahead and bring up a handy dandy graphing calculator 
I'll swing that right on over here and I'll type in 57 times um, you could put the quantity sign on there I'm just gonna write 3 raised to and then I'll put the parentheses remember when you have math in an exponent you have to surround it with parentheses 37 fifths hit enter and I get 193,451 and I'll round it to the nearest bacteria so 452 so roughly equal or approximately equal 193,452 bacteria if you want to do that every single skill I used here is extremely important when dealing with exponential functions you need to know how to identify the initial population you need to know how to identify the monthly or I mean not the monthly but just whatever the growth factor is whether it's daily growth factor monthly yearly whatever you're talking about you need to be able to identify the growth factor it tends to be very important in exponential problems finally you should be able to build a function and evaluate that function at different input values now honestly I've been talking growth factors but I haven't really talked about decay factors the reason why is that normally when somebody mentions a decay factor they usually talk about decay rates so let's let's uh, obliterate some confusion with factors and rates right now growth and decay factors versus growth and decay rates and so here's the key words here the factors growth and decay factors versus the growth and decay rates two completely different um, parts of an exponential function they kind of depend upon one another they actually do depend upon one another so they often students get them confused in an exponential function p of t is equal to p naught b to the t the value of the base of the exponential factor there is called the growth or decay factor so b is called the growth or decay factor however sometimes you're given an exponential function where B is pretty explicit it's uh, has a uh, it's still a B really honestly but some people write it like this they'll say oh one plus R and when you see this that little R no one plus R is is the de growth or decay factor that is true but R itself is called the rate and because we're adding it that would be known as a growth rate that's if we're adding it so when you have a plus R R is just a percentage so plus five percent so one plus five percent that means we're growing by five percent per year along the same lines if somebody comes along and they hand you a function an exponential function where you know the unknown is in the exponent where you have on the inside of your parenthesis in other words the base you have one minus R well the R there is known as a growth or I'm sorry growth it's known as a decay rate because you're losing a certain percentage and I'll get more explicit with that in a moment but I just want to make sure that we get the definitions out there so when you're adding a percentage you're growing right I'm adding 5% per year or if you're losing 7% per year obviously a population is declining you know you have a population of the United States if it's declining by 7% per year then obviously there's decay rate of 7% per year so for example a species of extremely rare deep water fish has an extremely long lifespan and rarely have children so there's just some fish that just doesn't have a lot of children whatever if there are a total of 821 of this type of fish and they're in a lake okay and their growth rate is two percent each month how many will there be in half a year and what will the population be in 10 years and in a hundred years so you have to start identifying parts because when I tell you you have a growth rate or a growth factor you know it's exponential so let me go ahead and highlight that so that we we can catch those buzzwords that buzzword of growth rate you're growing at two percent per year or the population's doubling or anything like that that means that it's exponential so 
Uh, I'm just going to point an arrow there. So that means we're dealing with the function p of t is equal to some initial population times some base to the t power. So let's try to find the pieces of this. Well, p naught being the initial population, they had to have given us that. I mean, it's not always the case that they have to, but they actually did. The initial population is 821. They initially had 821. Now all I need to know is what is the growth factor? Did they specifically give me a growth factor like doubling, tripling, quadrupling, or did they give me a rate? If they gave me a rate, then I'm going to have to use 1 plus or minus r inside of in, in the exchange for b. And they gave me a percentage rate of 2 here, so it's going to be, and they told me it's growing, so it's going to be a plus. This is 1 plus r, in this case, r, the rate, is 2%. So really, our base for our exponential function is 1 plus 0.02. That's the decimal form of 2%. So let's go ahead and write that function. P of t is equal to 821 times the base, which is 1 plus 0.02 raised to the t power. By the way, it's to the t power because it's each month. Not every seven months. If it was every seven months, it would be like that. If we were to increase by 2% every seven months, it'd be t over seven. But it's every one month, so it's t over one. Or in other words, just t. And now you can use this function to do all the rest of the problem. I would probably recommend, or I'd like to recommend, that you rewrite this as p of t is equal to 821 times 1.02 raised to the t power. I'd like you to also realize that when somebody hands you an exponential function of this form, you should take note. If you have a one point something inside of, uh, as the base of an exponential function, that's somebody telling you the percentage rate that they're growing every year. So let me just, as an aside, give you an example of this. Suppose that I said, oh yeah, there's a population, and here's the function that determines the population after so many years. Okay? Then you and no, I've basically told you a, a ton of information about this population. I've told you that the initial population is 30, so I had 30 of these things originally, and because it's 1.37, which could be written as 1 plus 0.37 if I wanted to, I already know that it's growing, because it's a plus there, growing at 37% per year, or per day or per week, per time. I'll just say per time period. So there's quite a bit you can learn just from the function that you're given. I could do this all day, right? I could have uh, the population of a classroom at the beginning of the semester is 30 students, let's say, or actually, no, that's not true. Normally, at the beginning of the semester, you have uh, 50 students in the, begin in the beginning of the semester. And let's say that this function determines the population of the classroom after a certain number of weeks. Now, you might think, well, this is not a one point 95 so it's not talking about I can't use what what he just told me but you still can use it because this is like 50 times 1 minus some number and that number is 0 0.05 what this is telling me you can think of it in two different ways actually uh, you can either say this is telling me that every year that pass or every week that passes I retain 95 percent of my students that's every week. Or you could say conversely, every week that passes I lose 5%. I lose 5%. Saying the same thing. So either I keep 95% or I lose 5%. Glass is half full, half empty, whatever you want to use. And this is just saying I initially have 50 students and I lose 5% per, per week. 
let's just pretend that's true okay so now you can determine how many students are in my class after 15 weeks I, I this is just made up data by the way so uh, let's get back to our our problem now that I've kind of taken some time on this aside to do a little bit more here so now when you look at this problem and when anybody hands you an exponential function you should always think oh there's some type of population of 821 objects growing at 2% a year or whatever it is okay in this case a month 2% a month how many will there be in half a year well T is in terms of months so I need to find out how many I that are going to be there half a year that's six months so I want to know what P of 6 is. That's going to be 821 times 1.02 to the 6th power. And, of course, something like this, I'd rather use a calculator. So I'll go ahead and open up this thing and put in 821 times 1.02 raised to the 6th power. And I get 924 and let's just round it down because technically it is a population of fish and so you can't have you can't round it up you have to round it down honestly just to be realistic you can't have 0.6 fish okay so that would be roughly the population after six months and then this, the next two parts is just how many do you have after 10 years and after 100 years? Well, 10 years is just 12 months per year times 10 years, which is going to be 120 months. And 100 years, 12 months per year times 100 years would be 1,200 months. I'll just plug in. 120 for the values of t in the function and 1200 we'll see what we roughly get here should be somewhat of a slow growth but who knows so let's see second answer bring back this oops i don't mean an answer shouldn't have done that one we'll do second entry that gets back our last entry and I'll just put in 120 instead of that's 6 8,838 and now again second entry to bring back your last answer and I'll just put an extra zero on there and I get a huge population this is 100 years later that the it's crazy so it's one point I'll just say 72 times 10 to the 13th power. It's quite a few fish. So again I just want to bring it back to the two basic forms of an exponential function. Either you're given a growth factor explicitly like tripling and all that fun stuff or a growth rate or a decay rate. And We've dealt with both of these. Now I sincerely despise not going into why the growth rate formula is the way it is. Some people just go, well, I'll just accept it. Well, I'd rather show you why it is the way it is. So let's show you why that population function is the way it is when you're talking about growth or decay rates. So suppose I give you some initial population. It grows at a rate of R every day. Let's go ahead and write a function. Well, the best way to start if you don't know how to start a problem is think of money or something like that if you had a hundred dollars and it grows at 10 percent a year that means next year you'll have how much so if you have a hundred dollars this year it grows at 10 percent a year that means next year you'll have hundred and ten dollars right how did you get that I mean people just say oh I you know ten, I get 10 percent of all I, I have students that say 10 percent of a 100 gives me 110. No, 10% 10 of 100 is 10. You add that back to your regular initial $100. So you started with $100, and what you did is you added 10% of that $100 to get 110. Well, that's essentially saying this 100 plus 0 0.1 times 100. That gave me 
at 110, didn't it? What you should notice about both these numbers, these 100s, is that they can factor out. The, both these terms here have 100 in it, so I can factor that out front. What I'm left with, well, if I factor 100 off this first term, I'm left with a 1. If I factor 100 off the second term, I'm left with a 0.1. But it should still equal 110. Now I'll show you where I'm going here. Let's go ahead and build a table for this situation. So time, and then our population at that time. So at time 0, here's our population. The next day, our population starts at what it started at the previous day, plus we gain our percent of that population. Just like here, we started 100, we gained 10% of that 100. Now, if you look at these two terms, they have a p-naught in common, so I'll factor that out. I'm left with 1 plus r. Okay, so that's what the population is after one day. By the way, notice the power on this is 1. Two days later, well, the population is initially going to be what it was yesterday, this population right here. So let me write that down. So at the start of day two, here's our population, p naught times 1 plus r. But it's going to grow at this rate of that population from yesterday. So in other words, we have yesterday's population plus we tack on a certain percentage of yesterday's population. Now if you look at this expression, both these terms have p naught in common, so I'll factor that out, and a 1 plus r in common, so I'll factor that out front as well. When I do that, the first term is left with a 1, the second term is left with an r. And all of a sudden you see that's going to be p naught times 1 plus r squared. Now you could probably see the pattern already, right? Day one it's p naught times 1 plus r to the first. Day two it's p naught times 1 plus r to the second. Obviously day three you'll probably, the population will probably be p naught times 1 plus r to the third and so on and so forth until you get to day whatever you want. Let's say day t. Your population is going to be p naught times 1 plus r to the t and this is our defining function that the population on day t is going to be p naught times 1 plus r to the t power which is exactly what we said is the exponential function when you're given a growth rate. Okay, So that's why the, the growth rate function is the way it is, is because you're constantly just tacking on 1 plus r. You're multiplying last year's population or last day's population by 1 plus r. And I understand that a lot of students don't like these extended diatribes about how to derive these things, but the fact is, if you don't know why something is true, then don't bother learning it, right? It's, it's, it's useless to learn something. You're not really learning, you're just mimicking, you're just being a parrot if you, uh, if all you do is, is uh, go around and just swallow what somebody tells you without thinking about it. So please bend your mind around these concepts. Let's take another example. Inflation is expected to be about 6% over the next nine months. That means after nine months, the value of something that, uh, that was a dollar today will be a dollar six in nine months. Right now, a certain car costs $18,000, let's pretend. So write a function for this. Okay. And to write a function for this, first of all, they've given me a growth rate. So this rate right here tells me it's growing by 6% every nine months. That's exponential growth right there. And in fact, they've told me the initial value, the initial population value for the car is 18,000. And I know that B, which is the growth factor, can be written as 1 plus, because we're growing in price, 0.06. So that's 
1.06. And technically, that's actually not true true because I told you that we're growing at this rate once every nine months. So it's actually going to be 1.06 to the 1 ninth power. Remember how this works is that if you do this every single month, if it's growing by 6% per month, then you don't have to worry about it. It's one, it grows by this factor once every one month, but it only grows by this factor once every nine months. So you have to have that one ninth power on there. So let's go ahead and write our function. Our function is just going to be P of T and you don't have to use P all the time, but I tend to like to equals 18,000 times the base raised to the t power. And the base we said is 1.06 to the 1 ninth power. And I also told you in the last problem, I don't like to write it like this. I like to write it like 18,000 raised or times 1.06 raised to the t over 9 power. It doesn't really matter. They're both the same thing. It's just I don't prefer to write it. Uh, the first way. How much is the car worth after two years? So two years, we're talking months though. T is in, in months. Be very aware of that. So when they ask you, and this is a very common thing in life, that you just, you always mix units in life, just how it is. So when they ask you how much the car is worth after two years, convert that to months. So part, that was part A. Part B, we're going to say what is P of 24? Because that's 24 months. Well, let's see, 18,000 times 1.06 raised to the 24 ninths. No use in reducing that fraction because the fact is I'm going to be grabbing a calculator no matter what. So I don't even bother reducing the fraction. Reducing fractions only useful if you are not going to, uh, if you're not allowed to grab a calculator. And we'll raise this to the, and remember there's math in my exponent, so I have to start with a parenthesis there, 24 ninths. $21,025.91. Roughly equals to, it's been approximated as $21,025.91. So, if you don't buy it today, well, you can buy that car in a couple of years. It's just going to cost you an extra three grand. Last part of this is asking me to graph this function. And really, if you're going to graph this function, the best way to graph it, honestly, is to use this version right here. In the long run, that's how you're going to graph these. So when we talk about exponential graphs in the in future lectures, um, it's it's going to involve that first form because it it really does make it nice when you're doing that. But one thing I'll I'll do here is I'll convert 1.06 to the one ninth power. I'll just find out what that actually is. Let's see here. 1.06 to 1 ninth is a number a little greater than 1. So really, I'm just going to delve into this a little bit further. Um, for, so for part C, I'm going to first say that P of T is really not equal to now. It's going to be roughly equal to 18,000 times 1.00649. I'll put on a few more decimals, 5327 to the T power. And remember what I mentioned in the conceptual lecture. In the conceptual lecture, I, I was comparing linear functions and exponential functions. I said the exponential functions have a really unique property, just like the linear functions do. Linear functions, when you increase the value of x by 1, the outputs get uh, added to by the slope. That's why we call it the slope addition property. Exponential functions, when you step by one in the x direction, you're multiplying the output by the base. So coming back to this example, I know that initially the cost is 18,000 and every single month that passes, 
I'm multiplying that value by 1.00649 and some change, right? Since that number is slightly larger than 1, that means that this, this product, 18,000 times that number, is going to be slightly larger than 18,000. This right here means it's an increasing graph. And that's just because the product between 18,000 and that number, once we start using it, is going to grow 18,000. Now, to be honest with you, if you were to, if you were asked to graph this by hand, you would just plot some points. Plug in t equals zero, um, which you already know is going to be eighteen thousand, and then t equals let's say five or nine or whatever you want to plug in. Okay, but what I'm going to do is just show you on a graphing calculator what it comes out to be. And for those who have graphing calculators, it's a good point to pay attention. Remember, all the graphing functions are accessed via the top five buttons. I'll hit y equals here, clear out any old graphs, and I'll type in 18,000 times, and I'll start a parenthesis and I'll say 1.06 and that parenthesis and raise it to parenthesis x over 9. Notice how I'm mixing these three different versions of my function. It's just this second version is easier to type in. Um, and I didn't choose this version I, I wrote down here in part C because that's only an approximated version. I want an exact version. So I'm just doing it this way. Now if you hit graph, you're likely not to get very much on your window. The reason why is your window's not set up to show a value of a car. So what you want to do is you want to adjust your window and say, well, let's say starting this year, so our, remember our inputs are the number of years that have passed, or number of months that have passed, and well, let's go out uh, to a two-year period. Okay. Oh, wait, but two years is 24 months. There we go. Now, the minimum Y value. The Y values are the outputs, and these are the values of the car, and the lowest value of the car is 18,000. So maybe I'll start my outputs at let's say 17,500 and the maximum I'm gonna say well I know the value after two years is 21,000 so I'll say 22,000 if I, if I hit graph now you'll see there it is here's my exponential function it looks like a line doesn't it it's not a line it's growing ever so slowly so it, you just have to trust me that that is not a line. It's actually just growing really slowly, but it, it keeps growing. It keeps growing faster and faster, just not as fast as most exponential functions that you see. Now, this is kind of an apropos example for um, something I was just doing this evening. I have a friend that uh, collects comic books, and he came over and, and asked me to help him value some of his comic books. And... Uh, so this is all about collecting objects and their values after a certain number of years. And um, if you know that the value of an object is increasing every year, well, then you'd like to keep it. But if you know it's decreasing every year, uh, it's probably good to get rid of it. So let's suppose you own a baseball card that's currently worth $8, but the value of that card decreases by 15% every two years. Write a function modeling the value of the card over time and determine the value of the card after 21 years. Okay, well, I know the initial population. Well, first of all, I know it's exponential because it's decreasing by 15% every two years. This phrase right here tells me this is an exponential function, not linear, not quadratic, but exponential. And I know the initial population is eight. That's the initial value. And I happen to know that the value of B is going to be something like, well, let's see, it's decreasing, so it's going to be 1 minus 15%, 0.15. Now, it's not just this, because it drops by 15%, not once every one year, but once every two years. So there is the decay factor. And actually you can kind of clean this up and write this as 0.85 to the 1 half power. So there are a couple ways you can think about it. You're losing 
15% every two years, or you're retaining or keeping 85% of the card's value every two years. Whichever way, it's the same thing. So let's go ahead and write the function itself. The population of the value of the card after t years is equal to 8 times 0.85 to the 1 half, uh, not to the 1 half, to the t over 2 power. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and now find the value of the card after 21 years. Well, that just means p of 21 equals 8 times 0.85 to the 21 halves power. And again, you just open up a handy dandy graphing calculator or any type of calculator. Scientific works just as well. 8 times 0.85 raised to the 21 halves power. There we go. 1.45, $1.45. Not worth a lot, actually, after 21 years. By the way, take an economics class or something like that, and you'll find out that it's actually worth a lot less because the fact is dollars are dollars inflates, or the dollar loses its spending value as time goes on. So that baseball card that was worth $8 today, if it's still worth, if that dollar forty-five is in today's dollars, it's actually worth much less in future dollars. So... Uh, just kind of an interesting little note. Uh, one thing you want, though, is you want to make sure that you uh, you buy a, the base, if you're a card collector or something like that, buy something that you know people are going to want. That's all i got to say after sifting through about 400 comics tonight. Okay, let's suppose a researcher starts two populations of fruit flies of different species, each with 30 flies. So we have two different populations going on. Species A increases by 30% in six days, and species B increases by 20% in four days. What is the population of species A after six days? Find a daily growth factor for species A. And then what's the population for species B? And find the daily growth factor for species B, in which species grows more rapidly. Okay. A lot of, it seems like there's a lot to this problem. It's actually not too bad. We have just two situations, two functions, one for species A and one for species B. And for species A, for both of them actually, the initial population is 30 fruit flies. So let me just start with that. Now I have to multiply them by a base. Species A is increasing by 30%, so that means 1 plus 0 0.30 every 6 days, so t over 6. And species B incre increases by 20%, so 1 plus 0 0.20, and again that's every 4 days. Well, you know, I hate having it written like that. I'll just write it as 1.3 to the t over 6. And this will be 30 times 1.2 to the t over 4. The question really is, which one's growing more rapidly? Well, uh, let's see, species A. I Honestly, I don't like how this question is asked. It's a great question, don't get me wrong, but... I don't like the fact that they're having you, well, actually, no, I think it's okay. Let's find the population, species A, after six days. Now I'm reading it, it actually does make sense. So let's go ahead and do it. Population after six six days here is going to be 30 times 1.3 to 6 over 6 power, or in other words, to the first power. Now I'm just going to, rather than bringing up the calculator, I'm just going to use the calculator in my hand right now. And that comes out to about, not to about, it comes out to exactly 39. And down here, population B, after four days, is going to be, let's see, 30 times 1.2 to the 4 over 4 power, in other words, to the first power. 
that is actually going to be 36. Exactly. So let's see. Looks like species A grew by more, but you're talking two totally different periods of time. For species A, that was six days that it got to grow to 39. Species B only had four days, and it grew to 36. That's a pretty healthy improvement. Now, um, before I answer the the secondary parts of parts A and B, so we already answered this was 39, and this right here was 36. I need to mention something that I sort of not uh, well. I'll, I'll blame myself. I sort of messed up here. Um, is that I shouldn't label both these p. They're two totally different functions. I should call this p sub a. So it distinguishes itself as a function from the other function. This should be p sub b. That's a little no-no. I really shouldn't do that. You shouldn't label two functions with the same letters if they mean completely different things. Okay. All right. So find the daily growth factor for each of these. Now remember, the growth factor is not 1.3 for this part A. It's actually going to be, so the growth factor here, growth factor, it's going to be 1.3, whoops, 1.3 raised to the 1 6th power. And the growth factor for uh, species B is going to be 1.2 to the 1 4th power. So this is where you grab a calculator. Well, maybe I will bring one up here just to illustrate this. Type in 1.3. You raise that to the parenthesis 1 6th power. I get 1.044. 1.045. Save. That's for species A. So 1.045. Roughly. That's the growth factor. Now let's see for species B. We had 1.2. Oops. Type it in there. And I mean to be typing it up here. 1.2 raised to the uh, again, start a parenthesis, and it'll be the one fourth power. It's 1.47. 1 1.047. Now compare these two growth factors. Which one is a larger growth factor? Well, this one right here is. Which means that it, species B is actually growing more rapidly. So on a daily basis growing more rapidly. So given time it'll that species will just blow up faster than species A. Alright, not so bad. Now I was gonna save this last example, these last two examples, for a different lecture, but it, I really don't want to waste a different lecture on just two examples. It's essentially is uh, bridging the idea between the base multiplier property that we talked about a few moments ago and using the base multiplier property to create a table. Now remember, with an exponential function, which we're going to assume this table represents, each time you take a step in the x direction of one unit, you are multiplying the outputs by the same number, by some number, but we don't know what. The question is, what did I mul multiply 8 by to get to 12? So 8 times what value is equal to 12? And the answer is, well, divide both sides by 8, you'll find that the value is going to be, uh, no, not 4, 3 halves. Okay, so this tells me that to get from 8 to 12, I will multiply by 3 halves. Check it out. 8 times 3 is 24, divided by 2 is 12. Let's see if that holds for 12 to 18. 12 times 3, that's 36, divided by 2 is 18. So I guess I did multiply by 3 halves to get to 18. So let's find these two last missing values here. I'll write them in black when we find them. I know I'm going to have to multiply that last 
since I'm stepping by 1, on the x value, I'll multiply the y value, the last y value, by 3 halves. So 18 times 3 halves. Well, 2 goes into 18 9 times. 9 times 3 is 27. So this should be 27. That's the unknown there. And again, stepping from 3 to 4 means that I'm going to multiply the output by, again, 3 halves using the base multiplier property. So the output before was 27. I'm multiplying by 3 halves. And this one, not so nice. There's just 81 halves. There's not much really that you can say or do about that. You can't simplify it, so it's just 81 halves. So there we go. 81 halves. Base multiplier property is pretty neat. It helps you really fill in a table very quickly. It also has a great interpretation that, oh, every year that passes, we multiply by 3 halves. Very neat. Now let's suppose this was example A, so I don't have to rewrite the entire instruction here. So let's do this again with another table. In this table, we again assume that it describes exponential growth or decay. Okay. And I know that if I take a step of 1 in the x direction, then I must have multiplied, if it's an exponential growth or decay problem, I must have multiplied the output by some constant. So what do I multiply 120 by to become 96? Divide both sides by 120. Oops, that's a question mark. Equals 96 over 120. And those both, that fraction reduces down to 4 fifths after you do a little bit of work there. So I know that I should be multiplying by 4 fifths. That's actually a decay factor because it's a number less than 1. The population is actually dropping. And you can actually see it here. It goes from 120 to 96. When I take a next step of 1, I will again multiply that last output by 4 fifths. So we have 96 and it's being multiplied by 4 fifths. Unfortunately this does not reduce down. It's just not a pretty picture. So this will become, let's see, 96 times 4 is going to be 384 fifths. Well, it is what it is, right? 384 fifths. And then you could complete this table by, again, you step by 1, so you're going to multiply this again by 4 fifths. And when you do that, let's see, um, times 4, it gets really bad, but you can still do it. Multiply the top by 4, you'll get 1536. Multiply the bottom by 5, you'll get 20 fifths. Again, take another step in the x direction, um, meaning multiply the output again by 4 fifths, and you will get times 4, 6144 in the numerator, and 125 in the denominator. Okay, so I think that pretty much covers kind of an essential basic introduction to exponential functions and kind of how to build them from word problems or applications. What we're going to focus on coming up are graphs of exponentials and solving exponential equations, stuff like that. Um, but this is the most exciting, I think, section or, or chapter or module in a, in a math and algebra course. Thank you.